Hey there, I'm Nico and this is Wes. By day, we work full time, but any chance we get, we're off chasing adventure. Our latest trip took us to the Balkans for two and a half unforgettable weeks, which we spent kayaking through Bosnia and Herzegovina's crystal waters, rafting Montenegro's wild canyons, and soaking up epic views everywhere we went. If you missed the start of our journey, you can catch parts one and two by scanning these QR codes or clicking the links in the description below. In this final chapter, we'll be visiting the incredible fortified towns of Kotor and Dubrovnik, and swim at what might just be Croatia's most stunning hidden beach. Our weekend of extreme sports has come to an end. Good news is that we are on our way to Kotor, which is a very nice historic town in the south of Montenegro at the sea. We have a very fancy hotel there. Yeah, see you there. The best part is yet to come. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> it was worth every penny. Oh, Limo. <laughs> After a very nice dinner at Moments Restaurant, not too far away from our hotel next to Kotor, we're gonna explore the actual city of Kotor because we haven't been yet. This bay is insane. It has all these towns on the on the huge mountain cliffs, and it all sort of comes together at the old town, the historic old town of Kotor, which is completely fortified and remainings of the city wall even go up the mountain still so it's a very historic town and like this there are more towns in the region such as Dubrovnik which is the most famous one and a lot less people know about a similar town called Dor, the Montenegro version of Dubrovnik let's say town is also comparable to Mostar in the sense of you'll only see it when you're in it so around it there's just this busy road you would never expect that you're about to enter a very historic place actually before to Kotor so I've been bragging about this town for two years now to Nico so her expectations were super high but for her it's like oh it looks like Venice but for 90% of the world something that looks like Venice would be amazing but she grew up next to Venice so yeah but I still I absolutely love it look at those streets around Kotor and Montenegro but we're staying in the one called Fisura and it's around 20 minutes away walking from Kotor Old Town so it's not exactly in the city center um, but it's close by it's much chiller here it is very very spacious there's drawers where you can put all of your stuff if you're staying longer than two nights <laughs> like we are and the feature that I love most about this bathroom is it has heated floors. Very nice. Maybe not in 40 degrees. <laughs> Maybe they should turn that out during summer. The most exciting part of the room 
relaxation day we're absolutely not doing anything productive today going to Kotor one more time this time during the day we only saw Kotor by then so it's time to boil in its heat <laughs> The old town of Kotor is a, essentially a fortified town. It's not the center, uh, it's covered by walls. And there are multiple gates that you can enter the town. There's a north gate, a south gate, I believe a west or eastern gate. And only through those places you can actually enter the town and from nowhere else. And this is one of the gates. Like Nico just said, the city is fortified and the walls are so well intact that you can still walk up them and walk around the entire city. If you go that way, you can climb up the mountain and this way you have a view on the amazing bay, Kotor. If you would go this way, you can walk around for a big while around the city. But we're just gonna walk into the old town now. It's way too hot to do that. So if you want to come to Kotor, please don't do it in July. say that Montenegro surprises me in a good way when it comes to vegetarian and vegan friendly. We were in Bosnia before and there it was really difficult to get something decent to eat but here like all the ice saloons or restaurants they have like lots of vegan vegetarian dishes or even all the gelados were vegan. Um, so Montenegro vegan friendly. <laughs> to prove my point. <laughs> Another thing that really reminds me of Venice about Kotor is that it has a lot of little squares, a little little piazze, with shops around, very cute restaurants and bars. I wonder why that is. Why does Kotor look so much like Venice? That's actually because first of all the city was founded by the Roman Empire but later it was independent and after that it was part of the Republic of Venice for centuries so for a long period of time it was built in the same way as Venice was built so that's why the buildings the streets the alleys remind you so much of Venice it just doesn't have the canals that are flowing through the city but the architecture is very similar to the architecture of Venice and it's as hot <laughs> as crowded <laughs> But it's beautiful. One more thing we really like about Kotor is that they're really, really, or about Montenegro actually in general, uh, it's a really cat friendly, animal friendly country, it seems. Uh, we've seen cats uh, being taken care of um, in Dormitor, in the north, in the towns, but also here in Kotor. We've seen a couple of shops where they sell uh, souvenirs 
a lot of cat souvenir, cat related souvenirs, and part of the of what they earn goes to um, the cats on the street. So they buy them food, shelter, uh, water, and just take care of them. And we also found now a cat museum, which we're not going to go into. We're a bit on a schedule, but it just shows how uh, animal friendly, cat friendly, especially the city is. about to make Croatia very unsafe. Montenegro, 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 Croatia! Oh, that was a disaster. <laughs> the third and last country we're visiting as part of our Balkans road trip is Croatia, where we will be staying for the next three exciting days. Good morning! This time. We are in a big rush because we want to catch the ferry to Dubrovnik, the first one at 8.30. It's currently 8.23. I still don't know where the port is. So hopefully we can find it where the first one's on the boat and early enough in Dubrovnik to still enjoy it before the mass of tourists comes along with us. To the Brownie? Yes. Thank you. Very, very promising. <laughs> it also looks already very busy, and it's not, it's like nine. <laughs> the boat ride was quite comfortable, so I would really recommend that. And you don't have to wait in line to enter the old town because it drops you off in the old town. So that's very nice. Uh, but the city walls and the city, like it's completely intact still. So we're gonna do what we always do. We do a walking tour first, so we know what the things are that we want to see and then afterwards we can go more in depth in the things we really really liked this is one of the most impressive old towns i've ever seen so far Better than 40 degrees. <laughs> the fountain behind us was built by the Italians and it's uh, the old aqueduct which is still in use. Uh, and the water there is completely drinkable, very fresh. We just got we just got some in a bottle. Because the only fresh source of water is behind the hill that's just outside of the walls. And that hill is 400 meters high. So to every time if you want to get some water, go climb over the hill, bring it back. It's too much of a hassle. So like 500 years ago, they already built pipes under the ground, under the walls in this fountain. So it was like the first historic way of drinking and using drinkable water in the old town. most of it. Um, they film here for six straight years um, and usually their favorite months to film are from September to October is what the guide told us. Also the most famous scene of the, of the series that was filmed in the Broken was the Walk of Shame 
We just visited those stairs and the guy told us that for each window, owners and the people living in that street were paid 100 euros per window per day in order to keep them shot and not disturb the filmings. And also all the owners of all the restaurants and bars on the street at the end of the staircase, they also had to close down um, and they were also paid by HBO. So it was a lot of money that was put into this set. We're hiding in the shade on the staircase after we had lunch. And we're about to do a wine tasting actually. Croatian wine. Are, Are we? Let's see. What to do when you want to escape the heat? Enter a wine bar with air condition. It was a very hot day in Dubrovnik, so at around 2 p.m. we just decided to head back to Kaftar and relax, retreat in the airco. We actually stay there for the entire afternoon and now have decided to come watch the sunset at a pretty beach. If you're ever in Kaftat, make sure to visit Beach Bar Little Star. The views are amazing. The sunset is, is incredible. The, it's probably the best spot for a sunset. Yeah. The, the beers and the drinks are a bit pricey though. It's uh, five euros for a small beer. And you get this... This... This sunset. Mm -hmm. We are looking for a place to have a drink, potentially a bar, somewhere to maybe party tonight. Um, and I think we stumbled upon a wedding. <laughs> Turns out it's not a wedding, it's just a very local place without tourists. Croatian party! Oh, 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 oh. What is also here? At a very local party. It just said on the side of the road, uh, we have a party, summer party, join us. So we actually did. And there are just a bunch of local people having drinks, food. It's actually a very nice atmosphere. We were looking for, like, it, we're in a small town, so we were looking for like a bar esque kind of thing. Couldn't really find it, and then we saw this at the side of the road. And it's quite cool. How are you enjoying your first Croatian party? I'm putting ice cubes in my clothes because it's still 33 degrees at 10 p.m. 10.30. So it's just a sign on the side of the road actually invites all strangers to join the party. Everyone lured in by the sign. Good evening. Good evening. Oops, good evening. Moon. Today is our last full day on vacation. Or on the last day because tomorrow we fly back at 9 15 a.m. and today we're gonna go beach hopping didn't go to a lot of beaches yet the day should make up for that going to the beach we parked a bit away from Pashkaya beach in 2019 this was chosen as the best beach of Europe so we're very excited it's a very secluded beach you park like 10 minutes away from it and the internet says you have to follow a rough path to get to the beach it's crystal clear waters golden sand cliffs around it so, and wait Walk back is going to be quite challenging in the sun. 
Maybe you should have chosen hiking shoes for this. We've gotten ourselves some shelves for the groceries, shade for when the sun is above us. Maybe bring a thicker mat if you're here. It's not that comfortable. So we should change our channel name to Unprepared Travelers. <laughs> short swim away we found our own little beach with a small cave it's a really really pretty beach especially if you go a bit more to the right where we just went across the water you reach a, a small cave where there's no people Still a bit to go. We made it. Stopped for a drink. But we're gonna go back to the hotel, take a shower again, and decide if we're moving on to the next beach or if it's just gonna be chilling in the airport. As we loved Dubrovnik so much the first time, we decided to spend our last night exploring it a bit more instead of going to another beach. I'm gonna go to the Walk of Shame stairs for Game of Thrones this film. Is this I'm not gonna do the Walk of Shame. <laughs> Thank you. Is this your favorite city? Good question. I'm not gonna reply now, I might sabotage myself. <laughs> All the buildings in Dubrovnik are pretty much unique, except for the houses right behind me. And that's because an earthquake hit the city once and a lot of buildings were damaged. So they had to rebuild this main street as fast as possible. So that's why they just basically copy paste all those apartments right next to me. So the entire main street was demolished after the earthquake except for the church. The church was the only building that survived the earthquake, but the water damaged it, of course. Us humans had to destroy it. Right next to the church, you're gonna find the old pharmacy. It is supposedly the third oldest pharmacy, operating pharmacy in Europe. So if you go inside, you can still See the pharmacy with all the little small old bottles and they also made a museum out of it for which you have to pay 6 euros in order to see how it looked before so we're not gonna do that but still pretty cool You can walk actually on the, on the town's walls however that is 35 euros per person it used to be really beautiful we're gonna keep that activity for another time we really want to visit Dubrovnik I think during the low season perhaps in autumn or spring it's much cooler let's be cool this is our last moment in Dubrovnik and the last moment of this video It's a wrap for our Balkan road trip. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're not as tired as we are right now. <laughs> I hope you got the memo not coming to lie <laughs> to Europe at all. Well, you can, come to, you can come to the Netherlands, you'll need an umbrella. <laughs> but if you liked it, like and subscribe. <laughs> now that you asked, or you're interested, maybe you're not. Our biggest issue traveling together in summer? 
airco. I hate sleeping in airco, being in airco. Well, I can be in it a bit, but it needs to be turned off. I absolutely cannot sleep in the airco. It's it's stuffing my nose. I wake up with a cough. I wake up sick. It's terrible. And for me, the colder it is, the better I sleep. So I'm so happy when I'm in control of the temperature. I just wanna I wanna freeze basically. I'm happy when I'm cold during the night. It's a constant fight. Yeah. And whenever there is an airco in our hotel room or Airbnb or apartment. It doesn't matter if it's 15 degrees outside. She's lying. He just wants to use it. I always lose the battle. Send, Other than that, I love each other. We like send, traveling together. Send help. <laughs> you can't eat. Paint me like one of your French girls. Did they train you to stay here? <laughs> Keep on wanting another cat. Maybe if I get this, this will be a sign. Why should people follow us? Subscribe. <laughs> because we're always honest. We're not gonna tell you that we're having a good time or we're not having a good time. Like sometimes traveling is difficult. Sometimes some places just not what you expect. And I think it's very important to share those things as well and not just hype everything up.